Hello everyone and welcome to this course on modern application development. So all of that was for Wikipedia. I'm just going to bring up one more sort of public API that you know especially uh, nowadays is something that is interesting to know that this was also implemented using a public API. Right? This is for the Coven app right, which all of us are now familiar with in 2021. It's basically used for vaccine registration and information. Okay. So as all of you know, you can basically go to the covin.gov.in website and get information about the uh, vaccine availability and you know book a slot for an appointment and so on. The thing is that entire app has also been built nicely, you know, around this notion of restful APIs, right? And why need an API? Because there is a lot of information that needs to be retrieved from there and also other things which it makes sense to do that separation, right? You could have a app which does it separately from what the backend itself is doing and by having that separation it makes it cleaner to sort of you know design uh, the way that the data is stored and also handle it and the numbers that we are talking about over there of course are huge because you know we pretty much have to assume that at some point all of India's population is going to be in this database right or at least you are talking about like 60 70 percent minimum. Right? We want to get to that point. So what are the kinds of APIs that it has? There are some unauthenticated APIs largely for searching and some authenticated APIs for booking appointments. I will get to that in a little bit later. The exact API of course if you google around for you know Covin API it will eventually take you to this but this is the link that you need to get there right now. When you go there, you see that there is some general information about the APIs itself. So, for example, it tells you, you know, there is a production server. This is where you can actually hit the API and get information. And what are the kinds of APIs that are available there? There is user authentication, mostly the one-time password on SMS that it sends, right? Information about that and how to use it. There are some metadata APIs. There are things for, these are mostly for searching and getting information about vaccination possibilities and so on. There are things for appointment availability and for downloading certificates. Now, this last part is actually sort of an authenticated one, right? It requires that. I'll talk about that a little bit later. It also has, you know, like I said, schemas, which tells you that these APIs may return information that follow some of these schemas. So, for example, it tells you what the schema corresponding to a vaccination center is, right? It will probably have information like the address of the center, the name of the hospital, the pin code of the place. Uh, and things of that sort, right? So all of that is also described out here. One of the APIs is, for example, the availability API, right? And what it says is, again, look at this, this is V2. So this is version two of the API. I, there was probably some initial version one and you know, at some point they had to break, make, make some breaking changes, which is probably what they moved to version two. It says that we are looking at appointment objects, and you know you're looking for a new session this is the public part and you want to find by pin code okay so this is the route used for accessing this part of the api okay and it gives you all the information right the parameters that it uses it requires the pin code and it requires the date on which you want to search right and it also gives you the option to try it out right there on the page itself what i did instead is to you know as before try it using curl. So one very important warning I need to state over here, please remember that this API has a very specific public function, right? It is it's one of those things which even as you know a joke, please do not overload it, right? Do not overdo this, be careful of when you are accessing APIs, right? Even Wikipedia and other places like that are not going to enjoy being hit by too many things but at the end of the day if wikipedia you know something happens to it yes it's a problem but if something like a health related app is affected that has much deeper implications that you do not really want to get into okay so please do not overdo this any testing that you are doing think carefully about what you want to do see if there are not you know you can hit the non-production servers instead of the production server right and in general, make sure that you do not put this into a script that is just going to run automatically and you know has the potential to just hit this page a large number of times. Okay. Anyway, so coming back to the API, just like I said earlier, you know, it's going to make a request 
to this URL, which is exactly what we saw earlier. One thing you'll notice over here is I'm explicitly using the minus x get to indicate that the request should be a get request. That is the default. So even if we did not have this, it should probably have worked. The difference is you could also do a post over here by changing this minus x to post. You'll also see that there are some minus h values out here. Okay. And these minus h values are essentially adding header information to the request that you send. Okay, so curl basically takes everything that you add in this minus h, you can have as many of them as you want, and makes each one of them a small line, a header line that goes back to the server. So for example, it will put in this line saying, I am willing to accept application slash JSON as the output from your side. So it's basically requesting a JSON output. Similarly, I am willing to accept English language output. You could change this to Hindi or other languages that Cohen supports. Now, what happens if you do this? Well, it gives an error. Okay. Now, why is that error? If you think about it, right, let us go back here. These things, the pin code and the date have been marked as required. I did not have them over here, right. There is no query string after this. So, it says input parameter missing. Let us fix that, right. The way to do that is basically just add on this question mark, pin code equal to this basically corresponds to some place in Chennai and I put a date, right, 4th of August 2021. Nothing else changed, right? The accept, etc. is exactly the same as before. When you run this, you get a lot more information. I have like cut out a large part of it and just put what is essential over there. It comes back with what are possible sessions, okay, vaccination sessions. This is an array of possible sessions. In each element over there, I have a center information. And that center is basically, you know, it has a center ID the name of the hospital, the address, the district, blah, 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 lots of information, including, you know, what is the capacity, the dose one capacity, dose two capacity, and so on, okay. So, all of this information basically is coming back from the API. I could use that in order to construct some kind of a script around it if necessary. Once again, I repeat, please be careful if you are thinking of writing such scripts. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it is, you know, a good way of sort of making use of the API. But you have to be very clear not to abuse such things, right? You have to be clear that you respect the intention of the person who's created the website and the intention of, you know, what this is actually being used for so that it does not get overloaded. Now, one thing that happens is sometimes you might have to, you know, explicitly put in a user agent tag over here, right? Uh, and the reason for that is because in certain cases, especially like I said, there is some automatic protection built into these things, which sometimes says that, you know, you do not want to be, uh, you, it will respond only to certain kinds of browsers. This is one possibility, which may get you past that, which you could add in over here, right. Now, what I am trying is another API, which is basically to download a vaccination certificate. Right? And it basically gives a beneficiary reference ID. Now, clearly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 is you know, just a random number that I put in over there. But the important point is what do you expect is going to happen? If I ask for a download of you know, some random person certificate, should it even be responding? It basically comes back with unauthenticated access. Okay. Now, this is interesting. It's basically telling you that the API says you should have authenticated in some way before you try to access this. Now, how do you authenticate? After all, I am just doing an HTTP GET request, right? There are many ways of doing this, right? Many APIs need to be protected. Either they are meant only for specific users or it is to avoid abuse by overloading servers. In this case, I want only the beneficiary, the correct person who has authenticated maybe using an OTP or whatever to be able to download it. And the way that authentication is typically done is that you require a token that only a valid user can have, right? So along with every GET request or POST request, there should be a token that only the correct user of the system will be able to provide, okay? One way to do that is you, you know, when you try to access a page, you basically redirect them to another page, which then takes them to a Google authentication or it sends an OTP or whatever. And after the OTP, it gives back some unique string right, which it is impossible to guess and they have to keep coming back to you with that string anytime they want to make a new request, okay. 
you could also use something called an api key which is sometimes used for things like twitter I'm not sure about twitter but you know github and uh, various other things that allow a person to have a key associated with their account and use that in order to access various things on the website okay so these are things that can be used in order to make requests in an authenticated manner right now i'm not getting into this in one of the later lectures we will talk about authentication of websites in general and also of you know uh, apis at which point we'll look into this in a little bit more detail so to summarize there are many different api examples right coven is there like i said there is twitter github the google cloud authentication may be either enforced in certain cases or it could be optional on some parts the main reason for happy having apis is that they allow various kinds of third party integrations you can write your own app in some sense that is able to communicate using this api right and effectively what it's doing is it's sort of triggering a remote function call right on another device right by targeting the appropriate endpoint you are able to trigger some kind of behavior at the other end 